Are you afraid of the deep ocean where there are crazy creatures like sharks, crabs, jellyfish, and even killer squids? And having no idea what's underneath you and what's about to attack you at any moment? Well, I survived 100 days in an ocean-only world. In this world, there is no land at all, which means there are no trees and no animals to feast on. I must find all of my resources in the water or underground. This is gonna be a tough challenge. A big shout out to my good friend, NotPaulGG, for telling me to do this. And just a quick reminder, you only have two days left to get yourself a cookie plushie. It's never gonna be sold again, so get it with the first link below. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Oh, oh, I finally made it to the surface. Just gotta catch my breath. Oh no, no, I'm sinking again. Please send help. I'm going under. I can't breathe. The first thing I see when I spawn into the world is some type of shark. He was pretty big and he was staring right into my eyes. I was really worried he was gonna come and attack me, but then he just randomly disappeared. But anyways, the first thing I did was look around and see what's around me. I wanted to find some type of land, maybe a sunken ship or anything that can save me from drowning. And unfortunately, there is nothing nothing around me. It's only me, my captain underpants underwear, and a very deep ocean full of random creatures that can attack me at any moment. I went over to the nearest ship I can find and try gathering some wood. And trying to mine wood underwater is a challenge on its own. And luckily, this piece of wood was just close enough to the surface so I can catch my breath and still mine the wood. I did it. I got one piece of log. We're making progress. But life can't be that easy and the second piece of wood was way harder to get. I was so close to getting the wood, but I started drowning and I panicked and swam back up to the surface. I was literally an inch away from breaking this piece of wood. But I decided to swim into the ship to find the treasure chest. And the chest was loaded. There was iron, lapis, emeralds, and even a little bit of gold. But the other chest was unreachable. So I decided to swim away and try to find another sunken ship. And I must say the ocean is pretty beautiful. With all the cute little fish swimming around. A couple of backstrokes later, I found another sunken ship. Not far away from the original one. I dove down to see what's inside and I found myself a buried treasure map and in the other chest i found the ship's food supply i got some wheat some carrots some coal and soon i'm gonna have enough food to feed a whole family and for some reason i was trying to get the wood that was really deep into the water and i started drowning so i decided to swim back to the original ship to gather some more wood while i was swimming there i met with my first ever drowned this boy was having a shrimp for dinner he had a piece of shrimp in his left hand my apologies for uh, interrupting your dinner but i'm gonna have to kill you you know it only took four million punches with my fist to kill and to heal up, I ate some nasty food. I had some suspicious stew, and I even ate a piece of rotten flesh. I'm struggling out here, boys. But I took a big deep breath and went down under to grab some wood. I finally got three pieces of wood, and I swam to the coral reefs so I can make a crafting table. I finally got on top of a coral reef, and I'm not swimming anymore. Thank God, my legs were getting pretty tired. While I was standing on the coral reef trying to catch my breath and rest a little bit, I found a alien in the water. He was just hanging out with the squids like it's a normal day. Look at him. That's an alien. But anyways, I made a crafting table, plopped it down, and I was finally out of the water completely. I'm not soggy anymore. Let's go. And I made myself the basic tools like a pickaxe and an axe. And day one was a pretty adventurous day. And I was pretty tired from all that swimming. So I just watched the sun set over the beautiful ocean. Bright and early on day two, I went right back to the ship to mine some more logs. I finally got 8 pieces of logs, and I decided it was a good time to go mining. And in this ravine right beside the ship, there was so much iron just staring at me, asking me to go get it. So I took a deep breath and dove under into the ravine. I started drowning fast. I thought I would find an air pocket somewhere, but I couldn't. And I slowly started suffocating. And I just made it alive. I was so lucky to find this air pocket, or would have died in hardcore mode. Oh man, I just sat there catching my breath. I was panicking. Drowning might be one of my biggest biggest fears. And I had a great idea to make myself some doors. This way I can place the doors in the water and it'll give me an air pocket to breathe in. I then went exploring the underwater cave to find myself some iron. And just take a look at me in this air pocket. It looks like I have a force field around me. It looks kind of cool. But anyways, I spent the next couple of days swimming around mining iron and coal. I finally found a dry cave ravine type looking thingy. And it was a big relief being able to mine iron and ores in a dry cave. Once I had 38 pieces of iron, I made a furnace and threw the iron in there to smelt. Oh, oh, you thought I was smelting it to get iron ingots. No, 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 no. I'm smelting so it's warm and I can dry off. I've been freezing in the ocean and in these caves, man. Once I had enough iron smelted, I made myself an entire set of tools and I made an entire set of iron armor. I suited up and I was ready to fight that shark that was staring me down earlier. Sheesh! 
I felt like a boss. Once all the iron was done smelting, I made a boat so I can start exploring the ocean and I started making my way up to the surface. Finally, daylight. I felt like I was in the trenches. But once I hopped into my boat, I noticed some big shark or some type of creature behind me. Oh no, I think it's the shark. He heard me talking smack about him. So now that I was decked out in iron armor, I had the guts to take a closer look. I got right beside him and made sure my sword was out just in case if he attacked my yacht. And he seemed pretty friendly. I even got right above him and he didn't even notice me. I then ran into this weird looking creature. It looks like a jellyfish with a piece of Lego on top of his head. What is that purple thing? I also came across these creepy octopuses or squids with pokey dots on them. And one of them swam over to me and I thought he was going to say hi. He poked his head out the water and he actually stung me. He poisoned me. I was panicking. I thought I was going to die. I was losing hearts fast. I boated away so quickly. Yeah, lesson learned. Don't go near those water spiders with eight legs. But anyways, I spent the next couple of days just exploring and trying to find some structures under the water. Take a look at how many drowned zombies were attacking me. Jeez, that is a lot. I raided both chests and there were literally nothing good in it. I then found a ruined portal in the distance. Inside the chest, there was a golden apple, some tools, and a little bit of iron. And you know I had to steal that gold block. I mean, I mean borrow, obviously. <laughs> I also ran into this sea snake or some type of eel right beside a shark. I was waiting for the shark to slurp up that eel like it's a smoothie. But once I got a closer look, I saw all of its little legs. I thought it was an underwater centipede. Oh, no, I am out so fast. I hate centipedes and all its little legs. Do you guys like centipedes at all? I then saw a blob of dirt on the side of this ravine and I knew I had to take it. I'm gonna need this dirt to make a farm soon. So I placed down a door and started mining all the dirt. The day was coming to an end, so I boated into the sunset. How romantic. All by myself. <laughs> the very next morning, I found myself another sunken ship. And I got myself a lot of iron and gold. I then made my very first friend, a dolphin. I started swimming around like I was Aquaman. I was so quick. I then saw this red squid or octopus chilling in the coral reefs and I wanted my revenge. I jumped in the water with my sword and went to attack it. I wanted to show them who is the king of the ocean here. But the red octopuses don't attack you and I just killed an innocent octopus. Yeah, I'm just gonna boat away from the crime scene and act like nothing happened. Alright, take notes. The spotted octopuses are the dangerous ones and the solid colors aren't. After a little bit more boating, I found myself land. The first ever piece of land. Oh, I was excited. It was only an iceberg, but as long as it sticks out of the ocean, that makes me happy. There was a lot of creepy creatures chilling by this iceberg too, but I had to get on top of it because it might be the only object above water that I see in this entire 100 days. It's basically as special as walking on the moon. Another thousand miles away, I thought I found myself a mutated shark, but it was just a hammerhead, and I thought I had a big head. <laughs> I decided to get into the water a little bit to see if they would attack me, and you can tell I was pretty scared. I was trying to hide behind my boat, and I had my sword out, and they weren't really interested. Maybe my meat isn't juicy enough. But um, bro, no other YouTuber can make sound effects like me. But I went to get a closer look because I want the shark to attack me. That is probably the first ever time you heard somebody say that on Earth. I got right above him, and he swam right next to me, and I was in the water. I thought he was gonna bite my foot off. He was swarming my boat. I was kind of worried. That was a close one. I just boated away. After days and days of exploring, I think I finally found where I want to make my base. I found this cool mountain range in the water that was like in the shape of a circle and there was a ravine that broke right through it that looked like it was a gate into the inner circle of the ring. So I want to make my base in the middle of this circle and build up these mountains so it's like a wall surrounding my base and it would be like a little separate pond or ocean with the ravine acting as a door for my boat to get in and out. If that made any sense to anybody. I then started working on a very simple cobblestone platform and I came up with this little ring clock looking design and right smack in the middle of the platform i wanted to make a water elevator that goes down and up from the cave so i went down into the water and started pillaring up to make the water elevator i then started filling up the pillar with a whole bunch of sand to get rid of the water and in the morning i finally put down some chests to sort out my inventory and i was running out of food and getting quite hungry so i jumped into the water to hunt for some fish and i saw this one lonely fish away from the entire group and i had to put him out of his misery i'm just kidding i also went for the big group of fish too because i was a hungry boy on day 14 i decided to go mining my goal was to find some diamonds and to find a mine shaft because right now i have no source of wood i was exploring this cave i found and there was no luck at all i was right by lava and i just couldn't find any diamonds and there it was i found my first diamonds of the ocean only world i also found more diamonds hiding under 
underneath this piece of wood. And I ended up eating all of my food, so I decided to spend the rest of my time collecting as much wood as I can. I also picked up some dirt that I found, so I can start making my farm once I'm out of the ground. <laughs> You guys see that rhyme right there? That wasn't even intentional. It just happened. Yeah, I'm trying to drop my Minecraft career and start rapping. But after spending about two days in the ground, just collecting wood, fighting mobs, and collecting some ores, I finally decided it's time to swim back up to the surface. I also killed all of these fish on the way, because, you know, why not? Once I got out of the water, I did the doggy shake. You know the thing dogs do when they're wet? I'm weird, bro. But on day 17, I decided to hop on my boat and go explore the ocean some more, because maybe I'll run into some cool things. And let me tell you, I actually ran into something super unexpected after raiding some chests i actually ended up getting a fishing rod with luck of the sea enchantment i was pretty excited and from day 18 to 22 i raided so many chests i actually slurped the ocean dry while i was exploring this hammerhead shark actually came up to me to say hello and he swam right up to me and i thought he was gonna jump and attack me so i quickly swung my hammer at him that's not a hammer that's an axe what am i talking about i'm not even sure if he was trying to kill me or say hi but he was looking right at me like three centimeters away um, what is going on? He's like on my boat. And I woke up this morning and chose violence and I killed him. But he also attacked me and I lost a lot of hearts. That scared me. I then got a buried treasure map and I went to go find the treasure. And I was having a lot of trouble finding it. Once I did, there was a lot of iron in there, one piece of diamond, a little bit of gold, and I was basically balling. And the weirdest thing happened. As I was boating around, I ran into the stronghold. What are the chances of me running into the stronghold just randomly boating around? That amazes me. But I was scouting around the stronghold trying to find the end portal room and once I did I swam down broke a block in and broke the spawner as fast as I could hey we found the end portal without using any eyes of ender now that is pretty pog I also decided to take advantage of the stronghold and I went to the library to steal all the books so I can make myself an enchantment table back at my base after an entire day of boating I finally made it back home my shoulders are burning man that's a lot of rowing and on day 27 I saw a lot of sharks around my home Maybe the hammerhead shark that I killed called in some backup to get their revenge. But anyways, I started placing down all of my dirt so I can make a farm. Because I'm running out of food, man. It's hard to feed this big belly. I then hold up all the dirt and planted two of my potatoes and all of my carrots. Look at them just dance around. But now I just had to wait for them to grow. And hopefully they do because I'm going to starve. I also spent day 28 to 29 making this nether portal. I used all of these buckets. But unfortunately, the footage of me doing that actually corrupted. And I lost all of it. But no worries, only good vibes here. It was time to go to the nether, so I went down into the water to grab some gravel so I can get some flint. I then made a quick flint and steel and lit up the portal. Also, look how great these shaders look. Look at the nether portal's shadow. If only real life looked like that. Oh wait, it kinda does. Anyways, I think I'm all prepared to go explore the nether. Once I got in, I just remembered I don't have any gold armor, so I slowly backed up back into my portal to grab some gold. Once I got those crispy Jordans on my feet i went right back in i was first met up with a gas that kept shooting his fireballs at me and one of the fireballs actually nailed the pigment in the head that was a pretty nice headshot i'm not gonna lie the pigments weren't that happy about it and i didn't even hit them it was the gas but they all got mad at me and started chasing me and i quickly built up on top of my portal to stay away from them oh my god look at all those pigments running at me oh i am screwed the pigments also took the portal back to the ocean only world and i was pretty scared to go back to my base with all these pigments waiting for me but I finally built up enough courage to go. Once I got through, I got attacked and quickly swam away for my life. And then randomly, they all started like synchronized swimming. What are they doing? They're just spinning around in circles. I thought it looked pretty good, so I had to take some cinematic shots of them. Dang, look at them go. But once I got back into the nether, I started mining some blackstone to use as building blocks because I'm sick of the cobblestone look. I then had to go back to my base to make some new pickaxes and these octopuses or squids were just right by my base. And this yellow polka dotted one started swimming closer to me i backed away in fear but i ended up killing him he also had a friend nearby and he wasn't too happy so he was doing this weird jumping dance looking thing and i ended up killing him too but i went right back into the nether to try to find a nether fortress and i was having no luck but i did see my girlfriend in the lava and her two sisters were chilling nearby but anyways i wasn't having any luck finding a nether fortress so i went back home but i did collect a lot of blackstone and bone blocks i turned the bone blocks into bone meal and i started harvesting for 
potatoes. And just like that, we have a whole potato farm. We eating good tonight, boys. I also had more dirt, so I decided to expand the farm because I'm trying to feast. And I think I pissed off all of the squids and octopuses because they brought their entire family over just to stare me down. Look how many of them are in the water. On day 35, I made my first ever diamond pickaxe and went down to grab some obsidian to make an enchantment table. I made some bookshelves from the books that I got from the stronghold and placed down my enchantment table. Then from day 36 to 40, I went to the cave to go mining. I didn't have much luck though. I basically spent all of my time fighting off mobs in the cave. But on the bright side, I did get some diamonds. On day 41, I was pretty sick of looking at my platform and seeing this ugly cobblestone. So I decided to use the blackstone that I got in the nether. I changed that blackstone into smooth blackstone and I replaced all of the cobblestone into blackstone. And this took quite a long time because this iron pickaxe is so slow. But once I switched up all of the blocks, the base looks so much better in black. I was really happy with it. I also want to expand the base a little bit, so I made a quick staircase that will lead to my new chest room. I started working on a big area with the blackstone just so I have a lot of space to run around in because obviously I can't run on water. And this is what the platform ended up looking like when I was finished. I had some nice fences and borders around so I wouldn't fall off into the ocean and it was all lit up and ready for the chests. And this time I didn't want to use normal chests. I wanted to use barrels and I placed barrels all across the platform. And the barrels also matched the ocean only world theme because barrels kind of come from shipwrecks. So I thought it was a pretty good match. I then spent the rest of the day moving everything into my new chest room. On day 45, I had some plans to expand my farm. So I put some water down the middle and now I can expand the farm off the sides. I also worked on a blackstone border that will go around it just to make it look a little neater. Now I just need to fill in the water with dirt, which I did not have. So I spent day 46 exploring the ocean, trying to find dirt to mine. But you guys know me, I get distracted really fast and I ended up raiding a whole bunch of sunken ships and random structures on the way. After finessing half of the ocean, I finally found some dirt on the side of a ravine and I mined as much of it as I could. A one day long journey turned into five days, but I finally made it back to my base. Screw! You guys see that insane boat parking? Sign me up for NASCAR, bro. I guess it's called NAS boat. <laughs> Yeah, I'm probably the only one that laughed at that. Uh, now it's time to finish up the farm. If only of these phantoms stop attacking me. God, they are so annoying. I finally finished the farm and planted potatoes on every single piece of dirt by the time it was night. Now that took a while. Could have just went to McDonald's drive through man. On day 53, I realized how broke I was and I literally had no wood in my chests. I've been waiting for a wandering trader to show up so I can trade for some saplings, but I had no luck. And I didn't want to go to the mine shaft, so I thought of the next best thing to go to the nether and grab some of that ugly red wood looking thingy i have no idea what to call it crimson i don't know man once i got to the nether could somebody please tell me how a phantom is in the nether i swear they haunt me everywhere that boy is so lost he was probably so confused when he went through the portal after an entire day of trying to find a crimson forest i finally ran into one and i actually spent an entire lifetime mining as much wood as i possibly can because getting wood is literally impossible in an ocean only world once I got back home, I turned most of them into planks and I realized how ugly this wood really is. I would rather have oak planks or anything like birch any day of the week. But I can't be picky because that's all I got. On day 59, I realized I had a lot of diamonds and I wanted to make some diamond tools with enchantments. And in order to do that, I need some levels. So I want to make a mob grinder and there was no way I'm making it out of cobblestone. It's just too ugly for me. So I had to make it out of blackstone. I made a whole bunch of pickaxes and went to the nether to mine the entire nether away and a couple of pickaxes later i literally mined out this entire section of blackstone and i ended up getting around 11 stacks of blackstone that is a lot hopefully that is enough to make a mob spawner i then turned all the blackstone into smooth blackstone and i made a lot of slabs after breaking down my nether portal i made yet another platform to expand my island for the mob spawner this will be the area where all the mobs fall and collect but anyways here is a quick build montage And I ended up running out of blackstone. I have no idea where it went. I had 11 stacks. I also realized I had 30 levels, so I decided to enchant a book and I got Aqua Infinity. Usually a pretty bad enchantment, but for this, absolutely amazing. I also enchanted some random iron pickaxes with the remaining levels and I ended up getting Silk Touch. But you already know, back at it again in the nether mining more blackstone. 
turned right into slabs and back up to work on the mob spawner. Once I finished the roof, I added a slab to every second block on the inside so no spiders will spawn and clog up the mob spawner like a toilet after Taco Bell. Did anybody get that reference? Anybody? No? Okay, me too. I finally had the chance to see if it was working and it was dry. Literally nothing. It's empty. It's a ghost town. No mobs at all. Like 16 stacks of blackstone all went to waste. But I didn't want to give up so I made around 4 stacks of torches and I wanted to light up every single cave underneath me so all the mobs will start spawning into the mob spawner. And I was really hoping it would work. So I literally spent an entire century lighting up every single crack in this mine shaft. I also ended up finding a zombie mob spawner. This will be really helpful later on. I swam back up to my island hoping to see like an entire crowd of mobs and there's only just one zombie. I'm not crying, you're crying. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed in myself, but it looks like we have a visitor. One of those pokey dotted octopuses came back and I was kind of nervous, but this guy was pretty cool and friendly. He must watch our cookie god videos. <laughs> <sighs> but I finally thought it was time to make some diamond tools and a diamond chest plate and pants. And I threw my old clothes into the ocean. Totally not literally, literally, oh my, literally, literally, littering, liter, litter. I was looking kind of cute with four different types of armor. On day 77, it was more of a chill day. So I just harvested my potatoes. And let me tell you, there was, there was a lot of potatoes. There, there was a lot. And by the end of it, I literally had an entire inventory of potatoes. This is going to last me like a thousand days. Actually, no, me, maybe like a couple minutes. <laughs> and I'm so sick of these phantoms, man. There's literally four phantoms attacking me. Why? And the second I killed four, another four came. Uh, I'm done. I'm actually, I'm actually done. It's starting to sound like Jurassic World out there, man. So I decided to just block myself in this water and drown. <gasps> So instead of dealing with those phantoms, I decided to just go mining. And I was aiming for a lot of diamonds. Strip mining at Y13 is literally the best thing ever. So I came out on day 82 with 31 ores of diamonds. Why didn't I just say diamond ores? What is wrong? Oh my. And on day 83, I finally started working on my water elevator. I was pretty tired of just finding a cave and swimming back up to my base. So I mined the water elevator pillar down to the cave. And I saw this zombie just taking a bath in my water. I'm sorry for interrupting, bro. And when I swam back up to my home, I got a pretty nice surprise by two creepers. I got pretty lucky that they didn't blow anything up. But I hopped on my boat to grab some kelp for the water elevator. I then skirted my boat to park and filled up this entire pillar with kelp. And just like that, I have a soul sand water elevator. And I think I was having a little too much fun going down and going back up in a big loop. So that is what I did for the rest of the day. I, I'm pretty childish, I know. On day 84, I killed all the mobs in my mob spawner to start enchanting. I enchanted my diamond pickaxe and I got efficiency 4 on breaking 3. Let's go. And the mob spawner was way too slow so I decided to go to the nether and just kill pigmen. And it worked pretty good. I got to level 30 in no time. I enchanted another diamond pickaxe and I got fortune 2 baby. I was so happy. I put down all of my diamond ore and started mining that so fast. After mining all of it I ended up getting 49 diamonds. On day 85 I noticed something strange. Over here you just see one squid right? But if you look left a little bit you see some invisible whale in your peripheral vision. What kind of superpower do these whales have? They literally go invisible if you're looking directly at them. So I had to hop on my boat to investigate. And once I got close enough, he popped into vision. And these guys make an insane noise in the water. It sounds so creepy. It's like a low hum. Maybe they're mate calling with me. <laughs> I really need to stop laughing at my own jokes, man. On day 86, I realized I have two ender pearls, and I wanted to kill the ender dragon before 100 days ends. So I got prepared to go to the nether to find a nether fortress and get blaze rods and trade for ender pearls. After some exploring, I ended up finding a bastion. Once I got in, I never realized how much damage a piglin brute does. I got attacked twice, and I got left at half a heart. My heart was beating so fast. I ran as fast as I could. I did not want to die on day 90 on hardcore mode. I somehow managed to live with half a heart, but this time I was smarter about it. I attacked them from the top so they couldn't reach me. Oh my god, there was a lot of them. I then realized this is the bastion with the treasure room, with all this lava underneath this bridge. That means there's gonna be a lot of gold blocks waiting for me at the bottom. I carefully made my way across this bridge, killing all the piglins, and found the center of the bastion. Look at all those juicy gold blocks waiting for me. After a little bit of planning, I decided to jump onto the gold blocks and looted the chest so fast and built myself 
back up. Then these magma cubes knocked me into the lava, and I was pretty certain I was gonna die. But luckily, I brought a cauldron with me and put water down and took the fire out. And I saw him coming for me, so I quickly built myself into a corner. After taking out all these baby magma cubes, I finally had access to the gold blocks. Ah, oh, yes, it's free real estate out here, boys. I mined all the gold blocks before any piglin brutes would come and attack me. And once I got them all, I ran like I was in a get out movie. Has anyone watched that movie before? It's a really good horror movie. But anyways, once I got out, I continued my journey to find another nether fortress, and I actually ran into another bastion. And this bastion was called the bridge or something, because the gold blocks were just chilling on a, on a bridge. I guess that's why they call it the bridge. I then ran over to the bridge, built up to the gold blocks, and started borrowing them. Definitely not stealing them. I could never do such a thing. I then explored the bastion a little bit and found a lodestone. Can somebody tell me what this does in the comments? It looked really cool, though. I've never seen it before. On day 92, I saw these two piglins looking a little homeless, so I dropped them some gold to see what they can give me. And the very first trade, they gave me two ender pearls. I've never been this lucky before. And the rest of the trades were complete garbage. After another day of exploring, I finally found myself the nether fortress. A hoglin then snuck right behind me and knocked me all the way down to the fortress. That was scary, man. I then found the blaze spotter and started killing all of them and got myself seven blaze rods. I then trapped some piglins to trade some gold with them to get some ender pearls. I actually ended up getting 13 ender pearls super quickly, so I kept trading to get even more, just in case some eyes of ender break. After some trading, I got 17 ender pearls and I left. Back home, baby, let's go. I actually hate the nether so much. Is the nether your guys' most unliked biome as well? Because it's mine. And once I got back home, I had 32 levels, so I wanted to enchant another diamond pickaxe. I enchanted it and I only got unbreaking three. And I was pretty upset. You can tell by my uh, vigorous mouse movements. <laughs> I'm getting closer to defeat the ender dragon. I then turned some poopy bows into a nice full durab durability bow, enchanted it, and I actually got an insane enchantment. I was not expecting all of these enchantments. I literally got every single one of them. I was really happy and feeling lucky, so I made myself another bow. I wanted to make this a god bow and get power four. So I enchanted this one and got power four as well. So I renamed it monkey mode. And I had to test the bow on something. So I saw this shark or some random tuna thing down in the water. And I was trying to shoot it with my bow. And it looked pretty cool because it was like raining arrows in the water. But I didn't hit him because I just suck at this game. I also enchanted all of my armor with just some poopy levels just to get ready for the ender dragon. And once I had my whole inventory set up, I just realized I found the stronghold earlier. I didn't even need this many eyes of ender. But then I realized I need to light up the portal. So I just hopped on my boat and left. But luckily I didn't have to throw any eyes because I took a photo of the cords of the stronghold. The 10 day long boat journey begins. After an entire night of boating, I finally got here. I dove into the hole I made that leads me into the end portal and I placed all the eyes of ender into the portals. Once it was all lit up, I was ready to go. Yeet. And you guys know the usual thing, just shooting arrows at all of the crystals and breaking them all, you know, with my 100% accuracy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I missed a lot. After a lot of bow shots to the dragon, a lot of axe swings to his head and some water bucket clutches, I finally killed the dragon. I collected the dragon's baby. I mean the egg and let's go. I got the dragon egg and I yeeted myself into the portal back to the ocean only world. There was just a slight problem. I didn't sleep. So I spawned at the normal spawn point where I started the entire video. You guys probably remember this ship, right? The original ship where I got all of my first wood. Well, it's the end of the video basically. And I'm still getting wood from this ship. After spending most of day 99 boating all the way back home, I decided to do one last thing before the video ends. I just wanted to spice up the island a little bit and make it look a lot better and also make a nice house. So I surrounded the main platform with some crimson slabs and it didn't look too bad. And on day 100, I wanted to build the house. I didn't have a lot of blocks to work with, but I decided to embrace the crimson wood and try to make it work. And this is the little archway I came up with. Then I accidentally stripped the crimson log and I took a good look at it and I actually really like how it looks. So I just started stripping all of the wood. Now that looks so much better. I also grabbed some cobblestone walls and put it on top of this little archway so it looks like a balcony and I wanted to add some windows. So I quickly grabbed my shovel, hopped on my boat and started mining some sand in the ocean. Once I got all the sand, I threw it all in the furnace. And while I wait for it to smelt, I started working on the windows to the house. And I'm not gonna lie, this crimson wood color is starting to grow on me. I'm starting to like it. And I love the noise it makes when you strip wood. 
But anyways, this is what I got so far. All I need is some glass for the windows, and I got myself a house. Well, the front of the house, because I never finished my projects. But let's not talk about that. I also threw these lanterns on these logs, and it looks so much better. Just adding a little bit of light and some spice. Oh my god, salt bay. Once the glass was done smelting, I put the glass down, and the entire house just looks so much better. Oh yeah, I'm pretty proud of it, I'm not gonna lie. Not the best in the world, but you know, it's gonna do for a ocean-only world. And quickly before day 100 comes to an end, I wanted to add something to these sides here. Something that will fit the theme of the ocean. So, I thought putting some sand down would look pretty good, and I think it does. It brings back the ocean into my entire island. What do you guys think? And that is my entire house, and this was my 100 days in an ocean-only world. And in hardcore mode. Thank you so much for 1 million subscribers. And I released my very own merch. That's right, I have my own clothes, and this one is special to my 1 million subscribers. This limited edition hoodie and mouse pad will only sell for 3 weeks, and you will never be able to get it again. So click the first link in the description to go get yourself the very first 1 million and cookie hoodie. What else do you guys next time? Thanks so much for watching.